first recorded lecture. Welcome. I was going to try and have you be able to see me talking to you in the lower right hand corner, but as you'll see, I have a bad tendency to add lots of pictures to slides. So I will try to be better about that in the future. And in the meantime, hopefully I can entertain you with just my voice. So I want to start with what is anthropology? I want you to take a quick second and think about what you think anthropology is. When you signed up for this class, what did you think you were getting into? Many people tend to have a general idea when they sign up for their first anthropology class, but they don't expect anthropology to be as widely encompassing as it is. Your book defines it as the study of people, their origin, and their development. That can pretty much be summed up as the study of human species and its immediate ancestors. Essentially, the study of all people in all times and all places. And we use all possible methods to do it. Anthropology is a uniquely comparative and holistic science. Holism, when we talk about that, it means we're talking about the study of the whole of the human condition, not just part of it, but the entirety of it. So what that means is when you look around the world, you'll see that human groups adapt to their environments in different ways. The primary goals of anthropology as a discipline are to describe what they see. So what do you observe with human groups? What do you see them doing? Analyze. So how many people do that? Is it common? Do you just see one person doing what's being observed or do you see everyone in a group? doing what's being observed. And then the fun part, explaining it. Why? Why are people doing the things they do? Why do people adapt to this environment but not that environment? Why do people wear those clothes but not these clothes? Trying to explain why is the most difficult part. We want to understand the different ways of life used by human societies to adapt to their environment. Anthropology is uniquely comparative in that it attempts to understand both similarities and differences among human societies today and in the past. So, for example, we can study people living in the Pueblos of the Southwest today. In the upper right-hand corner of your screen is Taos Pueblo in New Mexico. It's a modern Pueblo that's inhabited today. And see that their lives are similar to the people who inhabited Pueblos in the past like the archaeological Pueblo of Mesa Verde in the lower right hand side of your screen. We also study our species from its beginning several million years ago right up to the present. And when you look at this, you'll see that this is really important. Studying human societies and cultures actually is super important. There's so many good reasons for studying ourselves. When we study the variety present in our species, we're better able to understand the origins and development of who we are today. For humans, it's important for us to understand where we come from. Many societies have origin myths, such as the story of creation in the Bible. For anthropologists, studying ourselves is like writing our origin story. And remember that as a discipline, anthropology studies everything about being human. So you might be saying to yourself, well, history, psychology, sociology, they all study humans. And that's all true. They do. But anthropology is a little bit different. History focuses on the human in the written past. But anthropology studies humans at all times, even in the pre-written past. Sociology focuses on Western cultures. But anthropology focuses on all cultures. Psychology, economics, and political science all focus on specific aspects of culture, but anthropology focuses on all aspects of culture. So it's a real different kind of discipline. And when we look at cultural anthropologists specifically, they tend to study groups that have different goals, values, views of reality, and environmental adaptations that are very different from those of themselves. So it allows us to develop a very different concept of human nature than the research other disciplines provide. And this is what se separates us as a, as a discipline. It separates anthropology as a discipline. 
More often than not, what we also see is anthropology is the only one traditionally studying non-Western people and cultures. And remember, go back to this, anthropology is holistic. We study everything we can about being human, not just this or that about being human. Good anthropological research should open our eyes to things that we didn't know before, and it really should surprise us. So, we just noted that anthropology is the study of human species and its immediate ancestors. At all times, all places, anthropology, the goal is to make sense of this underlying logic of what people do. So, understanding the why of a people or a culture. And this is a pretty broad definition, and it leaves anthropology in a place of being an extraordinarily varied discipline. It is virtually impossible for any one anthropologist to examine everything that pertains to the study of humans around the world. So as a result, anthropology has been divided into several subdisciplines. Keep in mind that even though each anthropologist tends to specialize in one subdiscipline, we never lose sight of our goals as anthropologists to describe, analyze, and explain the different ways of life human use, humans use to adapt to their environments. So even though this course is going to focus on cultural anthropology, we should at least consider the other fields briefly. So there are four different subdisciplines, archaeology, linguistic anthropology, physical or biological anthropology, and cultural anthropology, and they are linked by this common interest in humans. What they differ in are their techniques. So let's quickly start with archaeology. Archaeologists is a type, it's a type of cultural anthropology, and it's defined as the study of past humans based on the investigation of their material remains. It's different than the rest of anthropology because of its methods. Archaeologists excavate to uncover material culture and then try to reconstruct the behavior of past cultures by looking at their material culture. There's no people, just their stuff. So when you're an archaeologist, typically you're one step removed from the people because you're just looking at their things. Using these kinds of things can be a real challenge. Sometimes past material culture may have an obvious explanation, such as the pyramids or these stone tools. Some of them look very obviously technological and they have a function. But sometimes archaeologists have to infer what is sometimes from what is sometimes considered trash what the way of life was of these past people. So an example, for example, an archaeologist might be able to say something about how a group of people got their food from the remains of food items found in a trash heap. Linguistics is the study of language. Language is often used as a way of categorizing people. So when we start talking about language, you'll see that the way we think, the way we act, the way we categorize things is all related so much to language. And when we talk about linguists, linguists are not the same thing as someone who knows many languages, but someone who studies language in its cultural context. So the task of a linguist is to try to understand the structure or rules of a people's language. They look for different grammars. They look for different ways for producing sounds. Language is often used as a way of categorizing people, like I mentioned. So we look at the different ways cultures use to categorize each other. Linguistic anthropologists look at the universal features of language and what they say about the human brain. They evaluate how language differences reflect different worldviews and how speech reflects social relations. They also reconstruct ancient languages and compare them to contemporary descendants. That's a field called historical linguistics. Physical or biological anthropology is the study of the biological aspects of humans, past and present. Physical anthropology is essentially a biological science, meaning that it often has more in common with biology than cultural anthropology. But because they are useful in understanding how our own behavior evolved, they fall within anthropology. It comprises two major areas of research, human evolution and human biological variation. 
These two overlap and also include related areas such as studies of non-human primates. So a major topic is the study of modern primates to see what we can learn about our ancestors. Human variability is another focus of physical anthropology. Why are humans different in different parts of our country? Why are humans different in different parts of our world? Physical anthropologists can often work with archaeologists to learn about human populations. And then finally, that brings us to cultural anthropology. It's the study of modern, sometimes non-Western cultures. But we often see today that cultural anthropologists are studying Western and non-Western cultures equally. Cultural anthropologists are sometimes called ethnologists. Ethnologists study living people within their own society. Cultural anthropology is distinguished from other social sciences because of the use of participant observation. That means they live with the people they study. Cultural anthropologists study all aspects of culture. This includes economy, politics, social aspects, folklore, kinship, art, dance. And this is what we're going to concentrate on for the rest of the semester. Most anthropologists see themselves primarily belonging to one of these subdisciplines. For example, I'm an archaeologist, and we tend to interact primarily with people in the same discipline. That being said, then why do we see ourselves as one group? Given that there is so much variation in what people in different subdisciplines do, it seems odd to many people that we consider ourselves to be one discipline at all. Even though most anthropologists spend their, most of their time and energy interacting with people in their own subdiscipline, we are strongly committed to staying together as a discipline. When a survey was conducted a few years ago, over 85% of American anthropologists strongly supported keeping anthropology departments together versus breaking into four distinct departments. What we are really committed to is maintaining the anthropological approach. The basic elements of this approach are a holistic perspective, trying to maintain a viewpoint that allows the broadest possible perspective, considering all the relevant factors that influence the situation. The second is a comparative approach. We consider a culture or cultural practice in comparison to other cultures. We do try to define some universal truths, but we try to understand them in a cross-cultural perspective. A relativistic perspective. We try not to understand cultural perspectives through the eyes of our culture, but rather through the eyes of the culture itself. For example, eating the brains of a dead loved one seems horrific and evil to the average American. It would be easy to condemn New Guinea cultures for this behavior. As an anthropologist, my discipline demands that I step back from my own revulsion and learn more about why this is done in order to understand it. To understand this, I have to view the culture from its own standards rather from mine where such an act would be criminally insane. And finally, we have this overarching concern with culture. If you go back to my definitions of the subdisciplines, you'll notice the word culture appears quite a bit. We'll take some time next week to Zach discussing exactly what culture is, but for now, suffice it to say that anthropologists consider culture to be a central element to understanding the human condition. Definitely email me if you have any questions about that. Next, I want you to watch the video, What is Anthropology? And I want you to watch for, what do people think of anthropology? What did they used to study? How about now? What do they study? What can we learn? And any other thoughts you might have about that. And I'll touch base with you in the discussion.